Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falk Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, it's gonna be Bisu versus Beast here on Benzene. Top right, gonna be Beast. He is our Zerg player. He's pink today. And a lighter shade of pink, we're gonna have Bisu. Why these two players pick the same basic color, I have no idea, but I can't switch it because it's gonna be yellow versus yellow, which is even worse somehow. Rah. All right, so got this replay from RJB. This is a recent replay again. Check him out at RJB TV. Thank him for all the replays he sends me. He keeps this channel alive, basically. Uh, all right, so it's a ZVP here. Beast kind of struggles with ZVP, especially against elite Protoss players. So we will have to wait and see if he can handle Bisu here today. Hit that like button if you're excited for a ZVP featuring a beast and featuring Bisu. Ah, I know I am. I am smiling ear to ear right now. I... Whoop, okay, so we're just going to go for a, a pool first play here, huh? All right. A little bit of an aggression here on the mind. Yeah, I was sick for about a week. You can kind of hear it in my voice, but I'm basically better. Oh man, an extractor trick. So we've got 10 supply with nine available. So scout this, scout this Bisu. <laughs> You've got Ling's coming. Doom, 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 doom. Are, are you, are you going to, you gonna, no, what? Just, all right, just scouting. Just scouting, just getting a little bit of minerals for the, the trip back home. And yeah, Bisu. Ta-da! Oh, the pool's done! Oh, okay! Oh, there's definitely six slings in those eggs, but I'm gonna stick around to make sure that they are. That this isn't some kind of a fake out. Okay, so it's four ling. Ah, eh, that's their six. Okay. So yeah, so at this point, oh, he's got a gateway anyway. Oh man, this is just, this is a paper, rock, scissors scenario and Beast is in trouble. Beast! Beast, my friend. Okay, well, zealot up, you can put the zealot in the wall, you can throw a cybernetics core, I think you could fit one in there. You can hard wall if you need to, he's not going to expand. That would be gutsy. Yeah, just throw a forge up, make another zealot. These lings can, yeah, they can basically chomp on the outside of these buildings, but they're probably not getting in here. Unless Bisu has a major slip up in a wall contain here, which could happen. Second base coming in from Beast now. Yeah, see the Lings can chomp away. But if they fight these two Zealots, they die. Because two Zealots kill six Lings, no problem. So just chomp, 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 chomp. And then once we get a cannon up back here, we don't have to worry about the Zealots chasing them out there and keeping that uh, gateway alive anyway. So actually, gonna go for a Nexus. And then maybe a cannon? Is the cannon even necessary? Does Bisu feel like that's necessary? For me and you, maybe it is. First Hunter Gas goes immediately into Lair with Metabolic Boost coming up next. Probe scouts all this information, says, mm, yes, Lair timing early. Fantastical. So we're going to see some Mutalisks out, maybe. Maybe just Scourge here. Trying to deal with the potential potential of the Stargate from Bisu, which is just a tell you open PVZ. Don't know what to tell you. So these lings want to feel useful, and they want to feel like they've accomplished something in their lives, so they're all going to try to kill this probe. Let's see how this works, shall we? Can we get the probe? It's so slippery. It's in the hands of Bisu. Ah, we got him. All right, cool. So it made all those lings and accomplished something. <laughs> That's the thing, though. That pool first play is really reliant on Bisu just deciding not to scout for some reason, right? He just doesn't probe scout, and his wall's wide open, and he goes for, like, a Nexus first play, and then you kill him, and you win, and you're like, hooray, but it's Bisu. Why is he not going to scout you? I don't understand. What a weird opening from Beast. I swear, this guy sometimes. Got a Hydralisk den out. Okay, not going for Spire. Instead, going for Lurkers fast. That is a sub-five-minute Lurker aspect, baby. Stargate coming in. You know what Corsairs are bad against? Lurkers. Unless they get Disruption Web, in which case they're okay, but no one ever gets Disruption Web. I don't know. Maybe if your opponent is going for a lot of Lurkers, Disruption Web might not be a bad idea. 
Hmm, all these thoughts. Yeah, 14 workers. Not really droning up here. I mean, this is going to be, I would say, I mean, Hydro Bust, but obviously it's going to be Hydra Lurker Bust. Mm, with air weapons coming in, this indicates a lot of Corsairs, and a lot of Corsairs kind of suck. When your opponent's making a lot of Hydras and Lurkers, kind of super suck. This might be, man, reverse build order problem. For Bisu here, his opening build order was great against what Beast is doing, but his follow-up build order is not good against what Beast is doing. Man, Beast has just cut workers so hard right now. He's making one, but he's happy to be at 16. He's not getting a third base at all. Not at all. Ling's overlords trying to catch any vision of where a Bisu might be headed. Just trying to prevent any scouting of what's going on here because if he comes in and sees no second gas and sees barely any saturation on the second base, it's going to be like, okay, there's some kind of a two-base attack coming, and there definitely is. There's actually a Zealot up here because this is a good place to put Lurkers, which is why the Zealot is holding the position, and this is why the Lings are making the Zealot have to defend the position is for that purpose here on Benzene. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a little bit suspicious, too. BC is going to be like, why did you spend the time to kill that zealot up there. Well, because there's lurkers making a beeline for that position right now. So let's see what he scouts. He's gonna kill this overlord. What up, Terry? Terry the overlord, die new a Corsair. What else is new in your life? And sees the lurkers just for a second, but this is Bisu we're talking about. So the lurkers burrow in and start firing away on this power generator, which they're gonna kill very quickly. Trying to get a cannon up. Is that a little bit late, though? I think the power generator is going to die before this cannon finishes. What an opening. Beast is supply blocked, obviously, because the Corsair did its terrible work. But the generator... Oh. And, oh, all the generators are down because of the splash damage of the Lurker's secondary wall. Oh, no, it's not a secondary wall. The Lings can get through. Bring the Zealots up. Build some cannons in the main base. Okay, got that taken care of. Kill the Lurkers while they're above ground. All right, Lurkers in position to where they're not taking shots from cannons, nor are they detected. They just took down a single Zealot from the reposition. He stopped all mining here inside the main base. This is beautiful stuff from Beast right now. On the other side, there's a four Corsair ball that is trying to supply block Beast into next week. But as long as these Lurkers are here, Beast is in trouble. Oh, they did kill the Lurker that was covering this area because the cannon was providing detection of that. Maybe a Lurker here would work, but the Zealots are trying to cover that one, too. Yeah, this is... I think Bisu might just be able to hold this thing. This is tight. More Hydras are being produced here, working on an observatory. Okay, I mean, the Robo just finished, so yes. We're teching into that eventually here. Are there Hydras home to deal with? Yes, there are Hydras home to deal with. With these Corsairs, obviously, because the Hydra Tech... Do not! What are you doing? Why are you bringing these probes back in? Okay, at least you didn't, like, set them up right here. They would have all immediately died. Reposition the one Lurker that's lived. So he did a good job killing two of the three Lurkers. And he's just trying to mine from the southern portion of these minerals right now. He's up in 25 to 19 workers, Corsairs. Doing all right for themselves. I mean, I guess a couple of them have kills, but, like, not necessarily hugely successful Corsairs over there. This Lurker's like, well, I guess I'll bust through this pile on and get myself a little bit closer here. How much closer can he get before the detection range of that cannon comes into play? Yeah, this is a pretty chaotic opening. Hydra's Lurker's going to try to maybe come through the same way here. Finally. The Observer is out. The Lurker gets killed. But guess what? Round two? Round two of Hydra Lurker. Trying to bust the front. Seems dicey. I would honestly try to go this way. But the Zealots can kind of just buy time. There's just so many cannons being invested into this area. And two in the main base. So I don't know. But Hydra's got their range upgrade. DT is on the way. Is there an Overlord in the area? No. Because they can't make it over here. Because the Corsairs are doing a good job pinning them at home. So, Gateway... No! Oh, doesn't get a DT out! Oh, actually does get a TDD... Oh! Gets the DT... No, doesn't... Oh, no! Doesn't get the DT out! Tried to send the Zealots out to delay and buy time for that DT to finish. No! Wow, that was huge. Okay, so Forge down, Gateway down, 
Bisu really on his back foot right now. He is, I was going to say, pretty far away from Storm, but he's got a Templar Archives. Lurker's trying to burrow into position to hold this thing. Hydra's focusing down cannons. Lurker's burrowing into position, and this natural base is toast. Bisu might just be dead here. He's trying to throw up cannons. No, cancels those cannons. Natural base is on fire. Puts him down to a one basing. There's nothing home here. He invested too much into the Corsairs. He's trying to make a DT. He's trying to make a TT out of this gateway. As we all know, DTs can save the day here in dire situations. But, oh yeah, we recognize. He recognizes the threat this gateway is. He knows what's happening here. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't have any overlords. It's going to be hard for me to get any out. So your gateway, toast. And Beast, you absolute monster. I don't see how Bisu comes back from this at all. No, he's just he's down 57 to 27 supply. He's still mining, but all he can produce are Corsairs, which are horrible. And that's a GG Beast. Wins a ZVP against Bisu in game one of our sneaky twofer. Way to go, Beast. It's <coughs> insane. Wow, what a great play by him. That was fantastic. That was a lot of fun. A bit of a lurker rush on this map. Map dependent, right? Busts through this back door, causes all sorts of problems for the income of Bisu back this way. He defends against the Corsairs with Hydras back home. And then he just busts. There's no storm available for Bisu because of how much the second gas was inhabiting. And he was investing too much into, like, zealots to help kill those lurkers and into the Corsairs, too, with the plus attack. So... That was great. I mean, that was just a beautiful example of strategy and one-upsmanship there from Beast. He gets the win in game number one of the Sneaky Twofer. Good job by him. He's got 39,000 points to 27,000 against Bisu. Insanely good stuff. Outproducing the Protoss. Outkilling the Protoss. Structures raising the Protoss 26 to 0. And outspending the Protoss Bisu as well. So, man... Yeah, all these games of Beast where I'm like, man, his EVP is just a little bit, a little weaker than I'd like it to be. But he comes through and gets a win against Bisu of all players. He's got another game against Bisu coming up next in our sneaky two verb. So we'll see how that works. I don't know. Could he, I mean, is he pushing his luck trying to get two wins against Bisu? Maybe. We'll find out, though. Stick around. Hit the like button if you haven't already. All right, game two is going to be here on Neo Sylphid. Top side, it's going to be Bisu. Left side, it's going to be a Beast. Man, excellent job by Beast in game number one. But I kind of feel like that build was map dependent, isn't it? Can't do that on Neo Sylphid. Because there's no way into the main base other than by through the front door. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. So if you want to support me here through YouTube, you can become a member of the channel by hitting the join button down below and joining people who have done that already. You get a nice little icon next to your name so everybody knows how super duper cool you are. And you can do that starting at like $1.99 per month. And just if you're not interested in doing it at a per monthly basis, you can do a one-time donation by hitting the thanks button. Everybody who does a super thanks, I heard their comment and thank them specifically and again thanks to everybody who has done that in the recent weeks and months i really do appreciate it i really do like it i really do love it i really does help and yeah at patreon as well patreon.com slash falcon paladin and paypal a lot of p's right paypal is just falcon paladin at gmail.com haha -ha. so we're gonna go gate expand here again aggression is what bisu likes to do in this matchup Get that gateway out. Forge expands are for lesser cowards. I'm going to get out there and try to kill the Zerg player fast. So it's counting down to check for an Overlord path. Doesn't see one. So heads left instead. Brilliant play there from Bisu, man. Because there would be an Overlord heading that way if Beast had spawned in this bottom right position. So beautiful stuff. Just the brain for this is always dead impressive. So this is going to be Zealot Pressure. And I don't know. We've seen Bisu Zealot Pressure Zerg players into submission, especially ones that go hatch first, which Beast did here today. Yeah, I mean, this is immediately. Bisu's like, make Zealots. Try to bruise up some of these drones so the Zealot can kill them faster when it arrives, because it's gonna arrive. It's coming for everyone.
<laughs> it's being really annoying here too, right? Zip, zip, zop, zip. <laughs> yeah, two of these drones bruised up. I mean, they reach down their health, but it's pretty slow. And guess what we're doing? Make another zealot. He's expanding. Making another zealot would be pretty good here too. How many lings are we going to make? Okay, six lings. So six lings can handle one zealot, no problem. Ah, second zealot has begun now that the nexus is on the way. Now that second pylon is up to tier two. Yeah, so zealot in the house. I mean, this is where things get a little bit scary. Why are you leaving? Maybe check it to see if there's a third base to shut down. But uh, that's waiting for friend, maybe? Why are you going this way? Don't go this way. Zealot! I guess there's a lot of lings. <laughs> He's just like, I don't want to get surrounded and die. Quickly, pull back. What is this? Wait, there was a second Zealot in production. Where did that go? Did he cancel? Oh, no. Oh, it's here. Wait, and was he here the whole time? He was camouflaged. Okay, so three Zealots. Ling pressure shut down by the three Zealots combo. A probe back here, too, just in case it's needed, but... No, it is not needed. This is not a Ling Flood. I mean, I don't know. There's four back home and there's four here. So eight. A little bit scary, but we're teching into a lair. So that indicates we're not going Ling Flood. Just enough Lings. Kind of keep Bisu in here. Right? Just kind of contain him. Now that the probe is sniped, he's completely in the dark here. Third base timing would be pretty good here from Beast too, but not something he did in the last game. But that's because he was going for a Hydra Lurker Bust. No guarantee that's what he's up to this time. So kind of th the same thing we saw in game number one, right? We saw some Lings, we saw some Zealots. We saw the Protoss going into a Stargate. We saw the Zerg player going into... Ah, Spire. That changes things. So this time, Spire. Stargate coming in from B, so he's not going to be dissuaded from his plans by anything that happened in the last game at all. But, you know, losing a game there to Beast doesn't feel good to someone who's as good as Bisu is, right? He's got his pride. Doesn't want to lose to anybody. So let's try to wipe that smile off Beast's face here, you know? Don't, Shano. Wings, man, Jadong would have gone for that run by. I really think if he would have tried to take it and just got the scout off. And there's nothing informationally incredibly important here, but knowing the Stargate is there better than just assuming that it's there. Like, it's not some DT rush, you know? Not that DTs or Corsairs are amazing or anything, but third hat and second gas up, too. This could be mutalisks. Oh, he goes for the run by. He just waits until like way later. Okay, cool. So he gets in. He sees what's up. He sees the first Corsair come out. He knows what's happening a bit before he would have found out anyway. Cannon wipes out one of the Zerglings there. And it is mutas. Okay, man. We're going three mutalisks. Air weapons on the way. This is not what I'm a huge fan of. It can work. It can definitely work. Going Mutalisks against Corsairs, but it's less likely to work when the Protoss player is making a lot of them and they have upgrades. I know. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Zealot checking to make sure there's a third base that Hibisu doesn't know about. Trying to juke away from... Oh, Juke's back down from the Scourge, which are just kind of, I guess, rallied up here or something. Like, where'd that Corsair go? Totally lost it. Just totally head on a swivel stuff here. got mutas out it's not like a million of them but there's five and there's two more on the way and there's scourge just kind of hanging around here too you're gonna join the group zealot legs coming in here from bisu he's got cannons up he's got corsairs i just fighting the big problem here is that the mutas want to stack to fight that's how they're more effective but stacking against corsairs is death And fighting against Corsairs while you're stacked up. Corsairs are beating on you. Cannons are getting shots off on you. I mean, if you can kind of catch a Corsair in the wild and surround it, 
sure, but that's harder to do here. With multiple Corsairs and cannons and these Mutas, gonna, uh, decent connections, okay. Like three of the Corsairs go down there. And a cannon gets wiped out and these stacked Mutas are like, please stop smashing me with your splash damage, it's not cool. And then another Corsair goes down, and a cannon dies, but and the Corsair dies, but man, there's nothing left here. There's four Mutas with no HP, and another Corsair pops out, and another Muta dies instantaneously. But then, the Scourge connect. Oh my gosh, the Scourge got another Corsair. Mutas are like, okay, we could kill something, I guess. I don't know. Look at these Scourges hovering over the Stargate. On the other side, ah! Zealot attack into the natural base of Beast. Sunken trying to help. No, Sunken dead. Ling's popping out desperately. Muta's coming home to try to save the day. Another another cannon comes up, replacing the two that have died. Or like the three that have died there. That was really scary for Bisu for a second, but he held it. I really don't think he lost that many probes at all. He's got 43. There's only 20 drones on the map right now. So, yeah. Like I said, did he wait? Did he just kill another Corsair? My gosh, I think he did. Yeah, you can keep the Corsair count down with your Mutas, but you're gonna lose Mutas. And they're a hundred, a hundred each. Wouldn't you rather just have Hydralisks instead? And most Zerg players say, yes, Falcon, well, I would rather have Hydralisks here, but some, some Zergy Zergs are like, Mutas, man, I like Mutas. They're good against Terran. They can be good against Protoss too. And yes, they can. I'm not here to tell you that's wrong. We've seen it win. But it's just hard. Like, he won that last battle, but he didn't really get any great value out of it, right? Maybe he killed a couple probes, but didn't do anything to slow down Beast's economy a lot. I don't know what this DT is expected to be able to do. I guess shut down a third base that exists here, but it doesn't exist here. It exists here. Yeah, that might work. Overlord Speed, I don't think has been researched. Get it? Ooh, no! Where are you going? No, but did you just want to scout it? DT is expensive for just being a scout. No, he's killing stuff. Okay. All right. Ah, Ling, Muta, attack into the natural base. Ling's on top of the cannons. Very good there. Muta's not as good, but that's why it's a play together. <laughs> oh. Another Corsair down. Nothing defending these probes at all. Why are you not just killing probes? Probes evacuating. To where, though? There's nowhere to go. Another Muta comes, or another Corsair comes in. Bam, dead. These Mutas, though. Picking off I Templar as they come out of the gateways. Brutal. Oh my gosh. Just attacking cannons. Again, the worker count for Bisu is not really being decimated here. Not really focusing probes all that much. One does die with that volley, but the natural base is a wasteland. DT trying to help here against Zealot, against the Zerglix. More Mutas. Absolutely froze. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I guess I'm a little bit more sick than I thought. My brain is not working. Third base. Natural base. Only 18 workers for Beast. Or for Beast, though. He's got Mutas to defend at third base against DTs if they show up, or maybe he's just making a rally up into the main. Cannonville. Bisu is just giving up on his main. He's like, nope, that's not happening at all. Yeah. Making sure that DT can't do anything about this third is a big, big, big nice thing. Uh, yeah, natural nexus is gone. This gateway is going to die. These zealots are trying to come out, get something done. The Mutas are like, no, how about we just pour damage out into your faces? How's that sound? Bad. All right. So one basing Bisu starting to get mined out here fairly soon here at 11 minutes. And uh, Beast, man. Beast is something of a beast. This is awesome. I'm, just, I'm not sure what Bisu does to come back from this. I like the Archon idea. He's still making Corsairs. He's like, all right, look. I know every Corsair that I've made so far has died, but I'm going to make three more of them. Oh, he's fighting? Really? Okay, so he decides to fight here. The Corsairs and Archons, but the Scourge count is insane. And every Corsair dies again. And this is making Mutalisks look incredibly overpowered. Beast. 
so insanely good today. B Bisu was like, I thought I could take my second base. No, quick. DT, save the day. It's got a 12 kills on that DT. What has he been killing? Oh, a bunch of zealots slipped out during the attack, forcing the Mew's attention elsewhere up to this third base. Mutas, they do kill zealots. They kind of suck at it. With the sunken support, though, it's not as bad. Everybody works together and those guys die. More cannons. Hurry, cannons. Warp in. I know you take 87 minutes to warp in because you could attack air and ground and your detectors. But seriously, the zealots are like, no, kill us instead. Not the can. Oh, ah. It's the cannons. Yeah, killing that pylon would be a big problem for BC trying to make anything happen there. DT Zealot. Third base. This is chaos. Third base of Beast or of Beast is in a lot of trouble. So it's not, you know, it's not three bases to one. It's two bases to one, which is still a pretty good position for Beast to be in. Man, he's just doing a great job balancing Ling's drones and mutas here with what he wants to do. He's got an idle drone here hidden by this overlord so that his laziness is not incredibly obvious. Which is nice. Flyer Carapace coming in. I just... Man, he does not give a crap about your Corsair today, does he, Bisu? No. Not even a little bit. Bisu's like, I'm not mined out yet. Oh, crap, just lost a mineral patch. Not dead yet. His third base never actually died. He saved that one. He's trying to stack. Oh, my gosh, getting that Archon would be sick without taking... Okay. Well, he lost a couple mutas there. There's a shield battery up. Dude, another Corsair dies. That's it. That's a GG. Bisu taps out and Beast goes 2-0 against Bisu in my sneaky two for today. Insane. He's his EVP. Surprise. It's a surprise EVP from Beast today. Awesome stuff. I'm sure a bunch of people looked at this and said, oh, it's a Beast EVP versus Bisu. That's not going to work for Beast at all. But those of you who clicked on it anyway, congratulations. You got some awesome... Awesome stuff from a Zerg player that you don't necessarily like a whole ton in this matchup. And he surprised you. And that's why you watch these games, right? He only had 30 drones at the end of the game. It's not like he's killing it. He's got a third base, but it's hardly mining at all. But yeah, the Muta stuff. It worked beyond my wildest dreams. This is the best I've seen Mutas look against a Protoss player ever. And it's Beastie we're talking about here. This is amazing. Yeah, I mean, these guys are all various stages of pink and purple. <laughs> absolutely just bruised and bleeding but not dead and still dealing full damage and once this natural base was dead and Bisu couldn't get it back up that was all yeah, he tried to counterattack with zealots and pull some pressure off of himself and re-expand but no beast had enough to hold mutas are fast they can kind of get over here save the day and make it back across to your base no problem you know Good stuff. I I don't know what else to say. That is some aggressive, aggressive Zerg play. 69,000 points to 63,000 per beast. He outproduced and outkilled and outstructurally raised and outspent by 3,000 resources in 14 minutes in game two. Just overall, truly, truly good stuff. I don't know what else to tell you. Beast, man. Over exceeding... Exceeding expectations. Huh. All right. Good stuff. That was great. That was that was absolutely fantastic. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.